No, it did not. Have, I mean, it's more readable if it's pretty. I thought we might be doing a video like this and I wanted to make it pretty for the video. Like a lot of deck builders, Moonrakers is run on top of an economy, right? We are upgrading our ship, we're hiring crew members, um, and all of those things require money. And if it's not balanced well, it's not gonna be fun. Coffee fact number one. Coffee is not a bean, it's a fruit. Good morning. Uh, it is July 31st. We have just over a month before the Moonrakers Kickstarter goes live and uh, we're gonna kind of vlog about it. So this is the first one. Please be gentle with us. We're gonna head inside and talk to Zach about gameplay balancing and how he wrote an algorithm to make it a little bit more scientific. Coffee fact number content. three. A shot of espresso <laughs> has less caffeine than a cup of brewed coffee. Coffee fact number four. Zach likes coffee. It makes his beard orange. It's a fact. It's a coffee fact. This is Ivy Studios ASMR. <laughs> okay, what, is, what else do you want? A simulation. How about yeah, that? Yeah, it's a simulation. Yeah. Let's call it a simulation. One of the big challenges with Moonrakers itself is there's so many different ship parts, there's so many different crew members, and they all work together slightly differently. So depending upon each game that you play and what you buy for your ship, it's really hard to isolate and test each individual ship part on its own to figure out how good is it, how much should it cost, is it overpowered. So what we did is we uh, created a simulator that allows us to isolate each individual ship part and get a kind of an, an objective number value of how good is this card that we can then use to compare against other cards um, and see how powerful everything is. When we started building uh, this simulator, the place that we started was let's let's get something up and running that that functions just like playing a hand in Moonrakers. So just like playing the game, the computer starts with the same deck you start with, shuffles those cards, draws it into kind of a virtual hand. Um, and also like playing Moonrakers, we've set up targeted goals. So you might go on a contract that requires a lot of reactors. So when it's simulating hands, it will try a few hands that are targeting reactors. It will play reactors, it'll play thrusters, draw more cards into its hand, and end that turn. It manages the deck exactly like you manage it when you play, but it does it in 60 hands played per second. So what we're able to do is play 3,000 hands um, in under a minute. One of the big goals that we were trying to see is, is what should our starting deck be? We started out with 10 cards, um, and then we were like, what does it look like if we increase that to 12, or we drop it down to eight, or we go up to 15 or 20? One of the things that was really handy with the tool that we built for trying to find the starting deck is how often are reactors coming up in your first hand. If you don't have a reactor in your hand, you pretty much have a dead hand. Um, and so we were able to actually see in our graph how often are we drawing and playing zero reactors on a turn. We get an actual percentage value of that. Um, and that kind of helped us dial in. It helped us kind of dial in that first deck so it, it felt powerful but also was set up in a way that you can modify it quickly and so that way when you add ship parts to your deck you feel it right away. Before we had this tool we pretty much were only able to go kind of on our gut as far as balancing. Pair different cards to what they can do to each other and just kind of what we thought about how powerful they were. Um, but what this allowed us to do is to get essentially we added to our spreadsheet of all of our cards a numerical value with how powerful each cards are. We found a couple cards that were overpowered, just blew everything else out of the water, um, but mostly it helped us kind of organize it and kind of assign and set up our economy in the game so that way kind of how expensive cards are match up with how powerful they are. So with each hand simulated, there is kind of an objective that the simulation is trying to hit. So for example, if the algorithm's objective is reactors, the only piece of data that we care about during that hand is how many reactors did we play. We simulate that out over thousands of hands and we get back an average number of how many reactors were played every hand. Then we do that for all the other objectives that you might need for a contract, so thrusters, damage, and shields. We take all of those averages together, we add them up, and that gives us a score on how powerful and effective uh, the current deck and setup you're playing with is. 
when trying to attempt contracts. The really useful thing about this is it gets us through thousands of hands in the time it would take us to play one hand. It allows us to essentially make sure that each part in the game is, is fairly and accurately balanced um, in a way that we would never be able to do uh, without it. What's life like for you as a ginger? Um, people tell me I look like Ed Sheeran. Because you have red hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell me I look like Justin Vernon, Boney Bear. He has also red hair. Hope you enjoyed that little look behind the scenes. We're gonna be at Gen Con this Friday and Saturday. Um, if you're gonna be there and you wanna play test the game, reach out to us on social media and we hope to see you there.